All right. Uh, 2021 Squire uh, Jazzmaster Affinity Series. This is the, the new one. It's uh, it's really nice. The neck feels amazing. Um, one thing I did notice was they put one string tree instead of the two. It a, it's one string tree, kind of like the American Strats. Just thought that was something to note. Uh, not that it's anything special. It's just a string tree instead of two. Probably just your typical kind of, uh, what do they call it, synthetic bone nut. It's not bad. It's it's cut fairly well. So, uh, But I do prefer to put the graph tech on there. And I do have a graph tech on the way. Uh, they did gloss the head, even though the, the neck is satin. And the neck actually feels amazing, um, if I may say so. But uh, yeah, they did the neck satin. And then the back of the headstock is satin. But then the headstock itself in the front is... Uh, is gloss which is pretty cool also cool addition was these fender split these old vintage style split tuners kind of like uh, I, I see these on more bass guitars than I do guitars but uh, so bass players probably recognize these guitar players maybe maybe not but you see them on a lot of old guitars old fenders um, yeah Indian Laurel uh, fingerboard uh, basically the point that uh, point of this video is I'm going to be replacing the pick guard. So I've got a vintage tortoise shell. Uh, it's going to look like the, I can't remember the series, but there's a Fender uh, Jazzmaster that comes in the Lake Placid Blue with the tortoise shell, and it looks amazing. Uh, it has cream pickups. So I'm probably actually not going to upgrade these for a little bit. They sound great. Um, but one thing I did kind of notice is I have a feeling that these are 500k pots, and Jazzmaster pickups. Uh, they came with one meg pots because the Jazzmaster pickups have a lot of bass response. Uh, so the one meg pots actually helped retain some more brightness. So anyway, I have a feeling these are 500s, uh, even though it sounds really good. Um, but regardless, I have some, some CTS, like good quality pots that I'm going to replace these factory pots with. As well as the, the switch is going to get replaced to a Switchcraft. The switch is surprisingly decent. Um, it's pretty smooth. It's actually, I would say it's better than the ones that come in the Epiphone guitars, the new Epiphones. Um, but it's still going to get swapped. It's still not the greatest. So, you know, you can you can feel it. And it's, yeah, anyway. Without further ado. But, yeah, got the vintage. Uh, well, sorry, this is actually the modern Fender 2-point tremolo. Um, and it's actually really nice. The The tech at Cosmo set this up really nicely. So it's it's got a really, really smooth action. Uh, you could you barely have to touch it. I mean, you could pretty much just blow some air on this thing, and it'll it'll hit the vibrato for you, which is kind of what you want on a Jazzmaster. Um, so it's not the traditional the traditional kind of really cool looking uh, trim, but you know it does the trick really well. And if you're used to a Strat, then this is going to be a piece of cake for you. So yeah. Anyway. So I'm just covering uh, the good side of the pick guard with masking tape and this will allow me to actually be able to draw the template directly onto it. Uh, it just makes things way easier. Okay, so pick guard is off and uh, just a little inspection in here. First thing you can notice and it's awesome is they use cloth wiring, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, if you're a nerd, <laughs> um, I mean, I use cloth wiring for like, you know, my vintage style pedals and stuff. I use cloth wiring in all of my guitars as well. So, I mean, this is pretty awesome. It's not all cloth. Uh, this stuff, it, coming from the pickups is cloth. Ground wire there. Uh, you can see some of the wires down here just connecting the pots. And then going to the output is uh, just your regular kind of PVC coated. But uh, yeah, man, extra points on that cloth wire. Uh, the input jack is surprisingly heavy duty, although it's not as good as the one that will be going in there. Um, but that's pretty good. I mean, that's a lot better than the, the normal jacks that you get in these, um, cheaper offshore guitars. And I should add too, this isn't the cheap, this isn't the bullet, it's the affinity. So it's, it's like the second step up from the bullet. Um, about $400 range after tax kind of thing, right? <clears throat> uh, so another thing. I was looking to see about these pots, 250k, uh, so that is pretty far off of the one megs that are going to be going in, 
So, I, I mean, and this thing sounded great through the amp. So, um, I'm kind of surprised there's 250k in there. Uh, I knew that they were kind of dark. Like, like I, I had a feeling that they had 500k's maybe. But 250k is pretty surprising. I guess they just, you know, that's what they have at the factory or something. Because <laughs> one meg would have been a bit of a stretch. Like, they're, anyway, um, without going too much into that. But, yeah, so not too bad. Not too shabby. Um, like I said, just going to replace... Pretty, all these electronics are going to get replaced. It's going to be an orange drop capacitor instead of this greenie. I don't mind the greenies, but uh, for guitars, I put, you know, higher quality stuff. Because why not? You only got to put one or two in there anyway. So why not get some good ones and uh, get that pickguard finished. Good old pickguard. So, um, yeah, I did the back plate as well, of course, so they match, uh, and as you can see, the mounting holes and everything, everything's marked, so there's no need for the templates or the originals anymore, uh, just chuck them aside and get everything cut out and mounted. So, got everything cut out here, um, just drilled a couple of holes so I can get a jigsaw blade or a Dremel in there. Same with this one, just a smaller hole. And I'm uh, going to do the component holes after. Looks a little bit messy, but this is about the point where things get a little bit messy uh, until we're done. So there we go um that is the main shape so the the whole drilling is pretty simple obviously just gotta get the right bits um but yeah we've got our holes cut you can get really close in there you can see that they're a little bit a little bit messy on the edges on that one so i may have to shave some this one's perfect most of it ended up being perfect uh, but that one's looking a little weird. Anyway, um, yeah, as I was just showing in my last video, this is just the end of like a, like a bullnose for the end of a, a step, like stairs. And uh, yeah, it's actually perfect because it, it, it gets all of the corners. So I I pretty much just sand all of the, the edges by hand so I don't put too much, uh, a little too much, you know, aggressiveness into the, to the sanding because the, the Dremel can take a little too much sometimes if you're not extra careful. So quick disclaimer, uh, this is the part of the process that can really screw everything up if you're not really careful. Um, basically I'm using a one inch chisel here and uh, again, you know, without a router, this is just my personal process. Uh, I'm using a one inch chisel and one part of the chisel is resting against the table as a guide and I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle and then cutting that bevel into the edge of the pick guard uh, it's not going to be perfect and that's why you're gonna just basically get this started and then come here with the dremel the dremel is going to finish the job up make it all nice and uniformed uh, and kind of flatten out that bevel so you know it's a really nice again uniformed looking uh, like it was done by a router basically when it's all done Afterwards, you're just going to clean up all the plastic burrs and, you know, you're just, I like using my hand at the end because I, I can really, really see and feel what's going on uh, and make it really nice and smooth. And then once the holes are all drilled, uh, you're going to countersink the mounting holes. This way, the, the heads of the screws actually are seated into the pickguard slightly and they're not 
kind of popping out of the pick guard. It would look all weird like that, so you want to countersink the holes. Okay, so here's the, uh, I guess the dry fit, if you will. Uh, tape is still on there. Yep. There's just a couple of screws. This one right here, this one over here, and that one right there. They didn't quite line up 100%, so what I'm probably going to do is just uh, put a toothpick with some wood glue in the original holes. Uh, just because I'm probably going to, when I drill the new holes, it's probably going to overlap the old ones ever so slightly. Um, and obviously if I were to do that as is, um, it'll just create a, you know, a much larger hole than we'll be able to hold the screw in. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is just put a toothpick with some wood glue down there. Um, that'll, that'll, you know, put some meat back into that hole, so to speak. And then when I drill a new hole, put a new, put the screw back in there, it'll, it'll have something to hold on to nice and firm. So yeah, um, it's just a couple of those spots and that's it. Everything else went nice and smooth. So perfect. I guess, uh, I have to move on to the back plate now, but I'm not going to show that just because it's the exact same process, but, uh, just, you know, different piece. So anyway, so there it is. And you can see the the bevels and whatnot. Try to get a better, better, closer look here. Yeah, so not too shabby for a Dremel um, without a router. It's pretty clean. You know, you could spend as much time as you want to clean that up. Uh, that's about as clean as I'm going to need it. So this is my own guitar anyway, so I'm not giving it to a customer but right there you can see it probably could use a little bit of cleaning up there some deburring of the plastic a little bit one thing you'll notice is that when you take the tape off it starts ripping off a layer of plastic don't worry about that because generally these things have like two or three layers of plastic like there's actually another layer even though the other one just easily ripped off there's uh there's more plastic film to protect it so you can wait until you're ready to you know, assemble everything and then take it off. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna put this thing together. Uh, I gotta redo the electronics in the meantime as well, and uh, I guess I'll show pictures when it's uh, when it's all assembled. And here is the completed Jazzmaster pickguard. So, came out pretty good. Um, you know, same as the original. A little bit of a gap up here, uh, but everything else is nice and tight. So, that's good. And you still have access to all the, the pickup screws there. So, we can raise the height or lower it if we need to. Um, these pickups are actually going to be cream or off-white um, pretty soon. I'm, I'm going to be putting a new set of the, the Fender Vintage uh, Jazzmaster pickups in there. They only come in white or well, off-white. Uh, which will look a lot better on this thing anyway. Uh, got the one meg pots there. Uh, they only come in the solid shaft. So you have to get the knobs with the with the set screw. Uh, switchcraft jack. Switchcraft switch. And uh, yeah, going to get the back plate on. Get some strings on. And it's good to go.